The picture that you see here, as y'all know who this is, happens to be King Louis 45, otherwise known as Donald J. Trump. And I just wanted to go ahead and make this little video. I'm going to make it, um, it ain't going to take too long. But with all the stuff that's been going on, and by the way, I was just looking at um, um, No The Ledge video of Brother Rich as he was interviewing Blue Pill about the NFL protest, Donald Trump's thing in this as well. But I'm going to say this once, and I'm going to say it again. As I reiterate Phil from the Advice Show and Jason Black, Donald John Trump is the best president for black people. Let me say that again. Donald John Trump is the best president for black people. It's the best thing that ever happened to black people. Hell, David Banner even said this a while months back. Now, let me explain why. Because, see, you've never seen this type of solidarity. You, you couldn't get this when Obama was there. But after what's happening, what's going on now, um, since he took office, <laughs> the man that did everything uh, from... <laughs> from insulting me, um, Mila Brzezinski, talking about how half her face was bleeding and stuff after she got plastic surgery, to, you know, just put being a savage at the G6 summit, G5 summit when he pushed aside another head of state and flexed on him, to, to basically going on a firing bench when he got rid of James Comey and, you know, all the other ones that followed suit. You know, but the thing with Trump, he's an interesting, a very interesting dichotomy, very interesting dichotomy. And I'm not just saying because of the fact, because he's a Gemini. So, you know, like, yeah, you know, Gemini's, Gemini's are emotional. You know, they thin skin. One minute they're this way, next minute they're that way. Heavenly twins, positive and negative, like the poles on a on a car battery or or household bat or Duracell battery. So and so is Mike Pence. Mike Pence is the total opposite. Gemini too. So when we in the age of Aquarius, so they're both air signs, so so he they resonating with that. And to now you know the we, let's not even start talking about the Russia investigation, the Charlottesville thing. Look Notice that nobody ain't been talking about that. They ain't even been talking about the Russia investigation as of late. To going from all this to calling, being at the United Nations, uh, being at the Boy Scouts Jamboree, <laughs> to being to the United Nations, referring to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un as Rocket Man. I'm still trying to get over that one. To the recent Klan rally that he attended at the recent quote-unquote Klan rally he attended at Alabama referring to um, basically through the NFL owners, most of the friends of his, Robert Kraft, Jerry Jones, Dan Snyder, Shahi Khan, Bob McNair, um, I can go on and on, Woody Johnson, Rooney, all of them. You know who donated millions to his contrib to his inaugural contribution, um, and he cut he basically threw them on the, under the bus and put them on the spot about which we will now lead to, as well as taking digs at Colin Kaepernick. You know, referring to the NFL, saying like if any NFL player protests the national anthem, say get those sons of a bitches out of there. To almost because we run there on the brink of he's beefing with um and North Korea and them about starting World War Three and you you know you got a situation in Puerto Rico you got this you got some other stuff going on it's still the killing of unarmed black people unarmed melanated people men women and children by um pink racist 
police officers and with the DAs and the judges help covering them up. And he's beefing with the NFL and on a Twitter beef with LeBron James. You know, LeBron James Twitter beefing with him. But one way or the other, because dude's supposed to be at the end of the world. Supposed to be. He's supposed to be in the last day, but be in the world. But Trump just breathed life into it. Yes, I'm saying his last name. You know, I used to call him the orangutan. He's still an orangutan, damn it. But... Nonetheless, I picked this picture because this just goes to show the arrogant smirk. And if you put a side-by-side -side comparison to King Louis, the orangutan from the Jungle Book, it's very similar. <laughs> you know, I mean, Trump is basically like my my, my brother, my Miami, um, my aunt, ugh, damn tongue tied, um, like my Miami brother and uh, Chauncey was saying. Yeah, he is going off cold, you know. And see, the NFL owners looking at him, Jerry Jones and all looking at him. Man, what the e are you doing? You messing up our money. That's the reason why you, why this Sunday pass, y'all seen all them clowns locking arms with their players, which to me is kind of weak, and I'm going to jump on them in a minute. You know, you thinking... Everybody thinking like, you know, the average average person, average nigga going to get in here thinking, come on, oh, yeah, they're showing solidarity, they're showing unity and all this other stuff. Let me explain something to you. The owners don't give a fuck about what the what the taking the knee um, is about, okay? That is not what Colin Kaepernick started at the bottom. I'm going to reiterate this again because I refuse to sit here and as well as pl plenty of other YouTubers refuse to sit here and let these crackers get out here and try to hijack and control the narrative thinking like, you know, all like this. This ain't going to be like the, Don the other Donald in the NBA. No, you're not going to hijack this. Let's keep, let's stay on code. Let's keep, stay on topic and keep focused as to what this is about. Addressing the issue of police brutality about the sanctioned murders of unarmed black men, women, and children by Caucasian, racist Caucasian, Caucasian Mountain um, dwellers dressed as police officers, dressed as law enforcement. And see, why I go back and why I say that Donald John Trump is the best thing for, that ever happened to black people because it showed a galvanizing effect. You know, he came at the right time. At the same time, Colin Kaepernick came at the right time to his awakening. Because as my brother, Rick, my Moorish brother, Red Pill, I mean, Red and Blue Pill has said, I, mean, I don't want to exclude neither one, but... As the pills that said, 2012, let's take it back, 2012, Super Bowl in New Orleans. The Baltimore Ravens, the Baltimore, M-O-O-R, Ravens, against the San Francisco 49ers, represent Catholic Church. And Colin Kaepernick, who nearly single-handedly beat the Ravens, you know, not just on that, but it's just the energy that even I got that resonated right there in New Orleans. You know, that at that time, at that moment. And even I said, I can still go back and research like he was t always talking about, you know, being for the people or whatever, what so, what not. He has that Christ energy. And now it came into fruition last year. And now look at him now. Because because of this and what happened, Colin Kaepernick is a martyr now. They're already talking about building statues and stuff in his honor. That there I didn't know about till I found out half an hour ago. Thanks to Blue Pill. Cause I got I'm gonna give credit where credit due. The information I come across and all that is not 90% of the time is my own, but not all 10% of the time is not my own. Cause you know, I learn from other people, just like everybody else. I watch other people you other people who subscribe to me, their videos are so on, excuse me. As well as I do my own research online or go to the libraries or order me my books or go to my own personal libraries and stuff. And I keep the ISIS papers on deck. I keep 
um, the Nelly Fuller's workbook on deck. All the teachers from my master teachers, C. Freeman Hill, Bobby Hemmett, Steve Coakley, you name it. <sighs> so it, it, this, it came at the right time. This came at the right time. Because here you got a man who's basically, he has no political affiliation. Um, you know, he got his own money, got this like that. And just like those NFL owners, he's a billionaire. And billionaires don't, like Shannon Shaw said, billionaires, personal money, don't like to be told what to do. And and he's no different. But to me, when it came down to all those players, and some of them were cooning, don't even get me started on Ray Lewis, because I did a video on his dumb ass and shit. He said he would never take a knee, and his ass was caught taking not one knee, but two knees. And then on top of my turn around and lie, talking about saying I wasn't protesting, I was praying. I knew that was going to come. And then the other coon, LaShawn McCoy, doing stretches. He thought that was going to be funny. He wanted to make it an Instagram moment. Nigga, we ain't forgot about what you said about Colin Kaepernick. Same thing with a lot of these other coon, kumbaya ass Negroes that was criticizing Cap and running to the media. Instead of going and talking to him directly, as J.R. Smith eloquently put it. But I stand firm behind this and stuff because, like I said, and I love it every minute of it because you know why? Because it's showing their hand. It's showing their hand. Because, because you got to understand something about with Trump. Yeah, he going to put them fools on blast but at the same time, he's also he's also going to go ahead and tend to his core base. And that happens to be, you know, your usual neo-Nazi, white nationalists that reside in the red states. The, they eat the red meat, the red-blooded, all red-blooded, all of them. You know, he's going to do that. Because a lot of this stuff resonates around the number 40 folk. As uh, Blue Pill puts it so very well. Y'all need to check them brother out. And uh, brother Rich, I don't know the ledge. All you got to do is type in YouTube. You'll see it. You know. Because see, now it's coming to a point now. It's already to that point now where you no longer can sit on the sidelines. You can no longer um, straddle the fence. You know. You're either going to be on this side or that side. Look what's been going on. Jay-Z turned down the NFL off. The NFL wanted him to, to perform the Super Bowl. Jay-Z said no. And he stood in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. Which we, which I know for a fact on that tip, that was their way of trying to drive a wedge between him and Beyonce. But that's another topic for another time. That's another topic for another time. You know, now you got LeBron James... Um, Steph Curry, and you know my stance on about with LeBron James on um, when it comes to when it when it's with this, he can go ahead and go on a Twitter war, a Twitter beef with Donald Trump, but he can't even answer. I said it once and I said it again. I said it last time. He can't even can't even speak on on issue about what to what happened with Tamir Rice in 2014, three years ago, and to this day he still ain't talking about it. But you know that's you. That's LeBron. You do you, you know. But this is the thing about that, cause see, like the past eight years, you know, a lot of y'all been asleep. And Trump, like there, he basically like he basically um pushing motherfucking ludicrous speed through this age of Aquarius. And you know he doing all this at a whew, record pace, you know. I'll send people that when I I talk to friends out in the streets or whatever like that when I be out and about talking about saying I ain't never seen administration this bad and da 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 da, da like that. I just kind of chuckle because you know because them not understanding, overstanding, understanding on what's really going on about the energy that's being put out there about what's what's really going on, you know. But see now, um. <laughs> All this started to come to fruition because look what's been going on. We had like four hurricanes 
coming back to back, you know, Harvey, Irma, Maria, Jose, Maria, you know, four hurricanes, plus the other two on the in the Pacific, Mexico getting hit with earthquakes back to back. So, like, a lot of shit going on that's been coming in spades, man. And see, and the human orangutan, and the orangutan here, you know, he knows exactly what he's doing. Do not be fooled by by his um, grandiose clownmanship. He knows exactly what he's doing. But the thing is, with the exception of a few of us, to, to those black NFL players, the ones that took a knee, you know, I mean, I even seen Dez Bryant take a knee. Man, Dez Bryant ain't sincere about shit. Um, you know, all this shit, taking a knee and locking arms and all that bullshit, to me, that was just bullshit. I wasn't impressed not one bit. And it was it was really weak with them locking arms. It was weak to me, you know, because you can't even stand in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick, you know, because I thought that the NFL players uh, thing, y'all supposed to be a fraternity. You couldn't even stand firm with your brother. But no, but y'all want to take a knee because for what? Just for your paycheck? Look at the word, the term, paycheck. You're paid to stay in check. That's all the Negro Felice League is about anyway. And yes, this is going to filter over in all the other sports platforms, including the NBA. Although Adam Silver, shout out to Ticket TV for this, um, said that the NBA has rules in there where it's mandatory for players to stand during the national anthem. And I bet you any kind of money, I'm I'm just sitting back and waiting to see who going to do what my man did, my brother did 20 years ago. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, formerly known as Chris Jackson, point guard for the Denver Nuggets, when he refused to stand up for the national anthem in a game against when it was they was there playing against the Bulls. You know, now he's over in the um three on three league by Ice Cube now, and you know, he's one of he's been one of my favorite players. But I, I'm just going back and I'm going to end this real quick. But like I said, the solidarity uh, among the real people, the ones who out here who put in their life, putting it, putting it all on the line for the liberation of our people to fight against white supremacy, refusing to accept it, refusing to embrace it. The only time I embrace it when I take it head on and destroy it. Because white supremacy to me is like a giant octopus. It's got eight tentacles. And it's got eight of those tentacles in nine of those arenas. And the arena I just talked about was entertainment because that's all what sports is. And this man right here, this primate, King Louis 45, is the best thing that ever happened for black people because now it's is people starting to um having a pineal gland activated. They starting to have a lot of this stuff activated. They starting to run, they're starting to go to YouTube, they're starting to watch videos of Bobby Hemmett or the pills of um Steve Coakley and all this stuff like that. And we've been telling you this shit for a decade, over a decade. But let me know what y'all think about it. You know, Fire away at the comment section, you know, share, subscribe, make sure you hit the notification button, um, the click the bell for the notif- for notifications so when I upload new videos, you guys get it. That's all I have to say for that. No more talk.